Well, I'm super excited to be here. Um, I'm Ross. Everybody who introduced themselves said they had already heard me and mm -hmm. been praying for me, and that's really exciting. I appreciate that a lot. And, uh, yeah, so I have been in the Middle East for about two months. Um, there we go. I hear myself. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, so I'm just going to share a little bit about who I am and really like the vision the Lord's put in my heart for what he wants me and my fiance Kaysen to do in our life. Because like we really have a vision to see Jesus receive worship, love, and adoration from every nation, tribe, and tongue. Um, and we want to we wanna see that happen. And we believe that can happen in our lifetime. Um, it's all about Matthew 28. It's all about the Great Commission. Jesus is worthy to receive worship, and we want to see that happen. And we can all be a part of that, and that's what I'll talk about a little bit today. But um, I'll just give you a little background about who I am. Uh, I'm Ross, and I am a native to Jones County. Uh, I grew up in Round Oak, Georgia, which is, many may know where that is. It's a lot of cows. Uh, not a whole lot of people, but um, it makes me really comfortable to be able to speak at a place where cows are across the street. Amen. <laughs> but um, if I can't preach nobody else, I can preach to the cows. Preach to the cows. I, mean, hey, it, I think he said Mark. He said preach the gospel to all creation. Amen. He doesn't yeah. just say people. That's so right. uh, yeah, but that's exciting. But um, I went to. I grew up in the in the Baptist church all my life. We we went to a few different Baptist churches and. I really had a solid foundation in the Word. That's what I remember about growing up in the Baptist church was really getting into the Word, and the Word was preached um, every Sunday. And in Sunday school, we learned the Bible studies, uh, the Bible stories of, of the Old Testament and of the New Testament. And it gave me a firm foundation. Um, and really, it influenced the person I've become so far. I'm only 24, and I don't claim to know a whole lot, but... I do love Jesus, and I mean, I'm pursuing deeper knowledge of Him every single day. Um, but yeah, I went to school at Jones County High School. I played uh, played football and baseball, and I wasn't great, but I really enjoyed it. <laughs> wasn't good enough to play in college, but when I graduated, I went to the University of Georgia, and um, finally decided I wanted to be an athletic training major which an athletic trainer works with sports injuries. Um, so I was still able to be around sports a lot. And I was able actually to have the opportunity to work with the UGA football and baseball team for a semester. And that was an amazing experience. And that is where I met my fiance, Kaysen. Um, she was also um, an athletic training major at the University of Georgia. And um, I hung around her for about a year and a half before I actually even got to know her, but then when I got to know her, I had to fall in love with her, Amen. and uh, here we are. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my calling to missions um, before I hop in to the Word a little bit. I, I grew up in the church. Let me introduce like, everybody who's here, actually. So this is my fiance, Kaysen, and on the other side is my brother, Will, and his wife, Sarah Burke, and in the middle is basically my brother Tanner and Caroline, his wife. We're all family. And then my dad, Thomas, mom, Teresa, and granny. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. we, are, we are really excited to be here, honestly. Um, when I was in the Middle East, um, mom texted me, and I was like, there's a pastor I want to never think of, like, partner with you and send me to the nations. And I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> it, was, it was incredible, actually, because that's really something I was praying about, is um, people, like, we're trying to form a team of financial and prayer partners Amen. who will wage war with us on the home front Amen. in prayer Amen. and make it to where we can go and be a part of fulfilling the Great Commission that's right. so Jesus can receive worship. And that prayer was answered before I even asked anybody. It, it was incredible. So I got back and talked to Brother Eddie and... Here we are, and we're super excited about that, and so thankful. Um, but yeah, so I, I really grew up in the church. I really had a passion to know the Lord. What I, what I usually tell people is I got saved when I was nine years old. I started following Jesus when I was like in eighth grade, probably. I really started to act on my faith. 
And then I started to fall in love with Jesus when I got in college. Amen. And I uh, really had some people take me up under their wing and disciple me and really lead me deeper into that. Then I had some friends in college who were passionate about missions. And honestly, I didn't know that much about missions um, until college. It was always, you know, witness to the person beside you, which is extremely important. You have to do that. Um, but really, people started educating me specifically about people in the earth who don't have access to the gospel. And God started stirring my heart and gave me a passion to see those people come to know the Lord, just like we do here. Like, there are places in the earth that literally have never heard the name right. of Jesus. Right. And there are places who may have heard of the name of Jesus, but have no true knowledge of him. And like, for instance, when I was in the Middle East, I was in uh, not, oh, basically a 100% Muslim country. Wow. And in the Quran, their holy book, like Jesus is talked about, but he's not yeah. the son of God. Right. He's just a prophet. It's right. like right. any other man. But we know that Jesus is not just a prophet. Amen. He is the Son of God, and He is God. Amen. He will have His inheritance in the nations, and He will come back and establish His kingdom. That's right. And it will be with justice and righteousness, and it will rule forever. Amen. Um, and people have no idea who it is, even though they know the name. So pretty much it, the evangelism in the Middle East was getting around to the question of who is Jesus to you? Because they know who Jesus is, but they have no idea that he's the Son of God. And if they don't understand that, they, they will die in their sins. And they will encourage us. Um, and we don't want that, and that's why we go. That's one reason we go. There's a lot of reasons we go, but we'll talk about that. Um, but yeah, in college, I really started to develop that passion for missions because other people around me were um, discipling me and telling me about the importance of missions. And then... I was on fire for Jesus. I think it was my sophomore year of college, and I, I saw an advertisement for a summer leadership program in Kansas City. It was three weeks long. So I was like, I want to go out there and be trained to be, like, I think the advertisement was to make an impact on your college campus, and I wanted to do that. I wanted to do that in Athens. So I, I took three weeks, and I went to this summer leadership program in Kansas City, and I get out there, and it's all about missions. And I didn't even understand it was about missions. And that was totally the Lord, because I probably honestly wouldn't have gone if, it, if I did. And it turns out it's the organization that I just went with uh, now called Acts. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But I spent three weeks, and I, we just talked about who Jesus is. And we fell in love with Jesus, and we prayed, and we worshiped, and we read his word together. And I really, coming away from those three weeks, what I told the Lord was, I still have two more years of college. I said, I'm going to give my life and commit to spending my life in the nations telling people about Jesus. Amen. Unless you call me somewhere else. Um, and if you don't specifically tell me to go with an organization, I'm just going to go with these guys. You know? um, so I did. And I went to college. And for two more years, I made an impact on my college campus. And I graduated. And he didn't, like... There was no voice from heaven thundering like, go here, go there. <laughs> so and I don't think personally you need a special calling for missions. I think if you're a Christian, you have a calling. That's right. Um, I read, I have Matthew 28. That's enough for me. It says, go, therefore, and make disciples that's of the right. nations. Amen. So that's what I'm doing. Amen. Like, to, to be a missionary, it doesn't take a special person. It just takes a Christian. You know, it's Christianity one-on-one. -on -one. And you can do it here, you can do it there, but I feel that I am best serving the Lord in places that don't have a gospel right. church, and there aren't established churches, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how I got, I got thrown into missions, and here I am. Um, and one thing that really I came away with that summer, and this revolutionized everything I knew about missions, um, because everything I'd known about missions was going to places and telling people about Jesus so that they can be saved and not go to hell. And that's great. Like that is, people like, we should have the love of Christ in us and have a heart of compassion so that we don't want people to incur the judgment of being in separation from God. That's right. But more than that even, what I found out that summer was missions is all about Jesus in that he has promised by God the Father an inheritance in the nations. 
He deeply desires intimate relationship with all of his creation. Us here, but then people on the other side of the earth. Amen. In India, in the Himalayas, in Nepal, in China, in North Africa, in the Middle East, and they don't know who he is. So when they die without the gospel, Jesus is missing out on a part of his inheritance. Mm -hmm. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, um, it says that he purchased men from every tribe, tongue, people, and language. Amen. And right now, he's not having what he rightfully bought with his own blood. Right. What a high price Jesus paid for people with his own blood. And he doesn't have that which is rightfully his. Um, so I came away realizing that missions is about giving Jesus what he deserves. That's right. As well as saving people from what we deserve, which is hell. That's right. And eternal separation That's right. from God. Um, and there's, and yeah, so my motivation, honestly, for missions at first was a, like a selfish sense of adventure. Like I wanted to go out and have a, be the guy who's like going in the dangerous places. But the Lord really convicted me that summer. Um, and I realized that missions isn't about having a great, fun, like adventurous time. It's about giving Jesus what he's worthy of. Amen. Um, and then I fell in love with Jesus. So then I want to do that thing. It's, Paul says in 2 Corinthians, like, the love of Christ, it compels us to preach Amen. the gospel. It controls us even to preach the gospel is what it says. And um, I think there's a perfect picture of what missions is in, in the Song of Solomon, which is, I know it's kind of a weird book to a lot of people. It's like a love story. But our, our relationship with Jesus is the same relationship as a husband and wife, a bride and a bridegroom. Amen. Because like we're gonna be married to Jesus. Amen. Revelation twenty one. It's all about a wedding. Revelation twenty one is about the end of the story. Is that Jesus comes back for his bride, Amen. the church, and they are perfect and holy and pure and spotless. Amen. And they spend eternity together. It's a perfect love story. But the Song of Solomon in chapter five, um, the bride is looking for a groom, and she can't find him. So she asked these ladies, she says, if you if you find my beloved, will you please tell him, like, tell me where he is, because I'm lovesick for him. And they say, like, who is your beloved more than another? Meaning, like, what's so special about this man that you want us to find him for you? And she just, she goes off and starts talking about the beauty and majesty of her, uh, her groom. And it's the same way with us and Jesus. And she says that he stands out among 10,000 people. If there were 10,000 people, he would stand out. You would know who her groom is because he's so wonderful. That's right. And after she gets done talking about him, the ladies who doubted it at first, like, what, what's so special about this? Yeah. They turn around and say, when you find him, Tell us where he is, because we also want to Amen. come see him. And it's the same thing in missions. Like, all we're doing is going out and we're telling people about Jesus because we're in love with him. Like, we're just sharing our heart. It's an overflow of our heart. Amen. Is evangelism. Whether it's here in the United States or, like, overseas in a, a country you've never heard of. We're simply sharing who Jesus is with other people and you don't even have to do anything. It's the Holy Spirit. That's right. He draws them, and they'll want to know about this beautiful man because there's really none like him. And what an incredible, and honestly, I feel the joy of the Holy Spirit in this room. Yes. Yeah. But they, they prayed with me in there beforehand, and I was feeling the Holy Spirit. But then you got up here and started talking about the joy of the Lord, and I was like, the joy of the Lord is in this place. Amen. It's awesome. Amen. Like, and I tell Casey all the time, like, I'm just so joyful. Like, I'm in love with Jesus. And that's what, that's what missions is about. It's not anything, like, crazy or, like, I don't know. It's just, it's what we do as Christians. You know? That's right. And it can be anywhere. Um, and I will say, like, John Piper has a quote, and he says, um, you either go, you send, or you disobey. Meaning, everybody's called to be a part of the great That's church. right. You either go, Case and I will be going as missionaries. You either send, that's what y'all are doing. You're prayerfully and financially sending someone so that they can 
go and do the Great Commission, what Jesus called us to, or you can disobey. It's, so basically, you know, you, you have to be a part of it. But there's so much joy in it, and you don't even have to leave your town to do it. Like, every single day, you have to be on mission. Um, we, have, we are called to represent Jesus, meaning, like, represent who Jesus is to a world who doesn't know him. And you can do that anywhere. So I really want to, like, encourage you, just represent Jesus with your life, with your actions, and with your words. And I could tell so many stories of, and I, I mean, I, I used to be super intimidated to talk about Jesus with people, but then I just kept doing it. Amen. You practice it. Amen. And you get over it, you know. Amen. Um, because I wanted to be a missionary, but I realized if you're scared to tell someone about Jesus in class or at work, you're not going to do it when you're in a country where it's illegal, you know. So I just started doing it in class and in the dining hall. I can't tell you how many times in college. Like, I, I can tell you some awesome stories about just telling, sharing the gospel with people in school, in the dining hall. One of my best friends, Nick, he got saved because uh, myself and another one of our friends shared the gospel with him after we worked out one day and we went to the dining hall and we were just we were eating Greek yogurt or something. And we started talking about Jesus. And then a, a year later, he actually just went to, he was in North Africa. He was in Morocco when I was in the Middle East. Um, and it's incredible. He's given his life to the Lord. Amen. And you, Amen. There are people waiting for the gospel out there. That's right. The book of Romans says all of creation groans, eagerly awaits the revealing of the sons of God. That's right. And Amen. we are sons and daughters of God. And they are groaning. Even if they don't know it, they want, like there's a, a God-shaped hole in people. And they need someone to represent Jesus to them. Mm -hmm. So that they can see this man. And in Psalm 34, it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Like, if you just taste a little bit of who Jesus is, there's no denying it. And That's you right. want more. That's right. Um, so we're all called to be a part of this thing. And you can do it anywhere. Like in your work, in, in your school. Like, <laughs> Anywhere in the grocery store. Amen. Amen. That was kind of like a tangent, but um, yeah. So missions is just all about a person, Jesus, mm -hmm. and uh, it really is that simple. It's nothing crazy. And one of like our leader at Acts, and I'm about to tell you a little bit more specifically about my organization. But he says we want revival because we want the man who leads it. Amen. It's the same thing, like. Why do we want the Holy Spirit to come and move? Because Jesus is the one who's leading it. That's right. And we want more of his presence. We want more of his activity in the earth. Because we're going to spend eternity with this man. That's right. And we want to know him intimately now. That's right. Amen. We're living in a very unique time in the earth right now. This is the only time where we can willingly say no to the things of this world and choose to give our resources to Jesus, our time, our worship, our adoration. The rest of eternity, we will have to give our worship to Jesus. Mostly mostly because we'll see with an unveiled face the beauty of this man. Amen. And there'll be one fitting response, and that is just complete worship. Of him. That's right. But we are living in a unique time that we can actually do it willingly because we don't have to. And I think, I truly believe that when we give ourselves to obedience to Jesus and to minister before him, just giving him our love, then he treasures that for eternity. I, I believe a billion years from now we'll be in in the new Jerusalem that will come down, and Jesus will remember that one time. He'll say, you know, Ross, I remember that one time. Amen. You took that time out of your day to walk over to that person mm -hmm. and tell him that Jesus loves him. Amen. He's going to remember those small acts of obedience and small acts of that's love. right. But yeah, so missions is all about Jesus. And the mission organization I'm a part of is called ACTS, A-C-T-S, the Antioch Center for Training and Sending. We are a training and sending organization, meaning we have a school, a three-month school, a mission school, and we train young pioneering missionaries um, to be able to go and do mission work in the places of the earth that don't have a gospel witness. And then we also send. So after the three months of training, we send people out to a two-month outreach phase to where you basically just get a taste of what it's like 
to be a missionary in an unreached place. And then you come back to the United States, and if you wish to go back overseas, then you, you go for two years long term. I just got done with the school and the two-month outreach. I was in the Middle East. Um, and I would go back immediately, but I had to get married. Amen. <laughs> June 24th is, is coming up soon. But, and Kaysen is passionate about Jesus too. Amen. She, well, actually, it worked out perfectly because while I was on my six months of mission, she also was with a different organization. She was in doing her training school in New Zealand and her outreach in a small island country called Vanuatu um, in the South Pacific. Um, and it impacted her incredibly. And it was great because we came back and talked about just like what the Lord had done in our lives over the past six months. And our vision matched up perfectly. Mm -hmm. Like we want to make disciples in the nations among Amen. unreached people groups. And um, one thing that ACTS, our organization, really focuses on is unreached people groups. And, and what that means is uh, there are people and places in the earth that um, don't have access to the gospel. Like, there are many places that many of you may have gone on mission trips to um, and it's wonderful but there's like there are churches there yeah. and uh, you can still do a great work there but we focus on the parts of the earth that are unreached Amen. Um, which I guess the technical definition is less than 2% Christian and they just say that that's just a random number because they believe that if there's less than 2% Christian the church is unable to grow by itself right. they need missionaries to help and more than that, they need the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um, and that's really what we focus on. And we focus on those people for a couple of reasons. Um, and my favorite reason is because in Matthew 24, verse 14, Jesus is talking and he says, um, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all the nations Amen. before the end. Will that's come. right. Mm -hmm. So before Jesus comes back, which Paul says is the blessed hope of every Christian. Like, we want to be united with Jesus forever. And before that can happen, the gospel must be preached to all people. And it's, it's incredible and it's an odd dynamic the way God works with human beings to see his will accomplished in the earth. And I don't fully understand it because, I mean, he's a sovereign God and he can do anything. But what he's done is he's chosen to speak like give us a responsibility to go and take his gospel to the nations. He can do it by himself, but God is all about relationship. And he knows that in order to form deeper relationship, if we work together to do this task, then we'll know him more and we'll love him more. And our relationship with him will exponentially be deeper. Um, so he chooses, it, chooses to do it with us. And I'll just give you a couple stats about unreached people groups um, because it's it's really, I feel like, very important that the gospel is preached to unreached people groups specifically. There's an area in the earth called the 1040 window. And that's a, just another term. It's an imaginary box stretching from um, North Africa to East Asia between the 10 and 40 latitude lines. And it just it's just an imaginary box. But in that box are 90% of the world's unreached people. Um, 90%. And the crazy thing is, only 3% of the world's missionaries go to those 90%. Wow. 42% of the world is considered unreached right now. That is incredible. 42% uh, of the world does not have access to the gospel. To wow. us. And as a result, they do not have eternal life. In, in 1 John, he says, the one who has the Son has life. Amen. The one who does not have the Son does not have life. That's right. And it's, it is it's simple. Mm -hmm. Last week, we celebrated Easter, which is the most joyous day of the Amen. year. I, I mean, it's, Christmas is amazing, but Easter is even better. Amen. Because it's about the resurrection from the dead, and that's our hope. But 40% of the world has never heard the story that we celebrate. That's right. Week. And that's not okay because Jesus has an inheritance in the nations. In Psalm 2, um, it's a prophecy of the Messiah that's coming. 
And uh, it's God the Father. He says, ask of me, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. And the end of the earth is your possession. And it's God the Father talking to God the Son. And he's promised these nations. But he won't have his inheritance in the nations until we partner with him and go and take the gospel to these people. Um, So that's what I'm giving my life to because it's exciting. And Jesus is worthy um, to be praised by all people. And uh, I would say my organization acts, our biggest number one conviction is the worth of Jesus. Jesus is worthy of our attention, our adoration, our praise, our worship. And so is the rest of the world. Like the rest of the world, deserve, like Jesus is deserving of the whole world giving him worship. Amen. John Piper, one of my favorite quotes, John Piper, he says, Worship or missions it exists because worship doesn't. Meaning, if Jesus was being worshipped by all people, there would be no need for missions. Amen. But right now, that's not the case. So we have to go. We have to go so that Jesus can receive worship from all people. And we can all be a part of that process. Um, we truly can. And I'm kind of jumping around. I, I'll tell you a little bit about my experience in the mission field. Um, oddly enough, before I went overseas in November, I had never been outside the United States. Uh, I think. Texas was the farthest away from home I had ever been. Um, but I had a passion for the gospel to be spread, and I have for years. So I, I got the opportunity to go to the Middle East on my outreach. And what we did was we got together. I had a team of five other people, and we prayed for four hours a day. Wow. Which is not easy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we prayed for God to break in and the Holy Spirit to release revival. In the country I was in, um, and I, I would definitely share the country I'm in. But we're on, we're being video. Um, if you want to know after the service, come up and I'll gladly tell you. Um, but the country I was in is 100% Muslim, and um, there are 80 million people in this country, and they estimate about 5,000 Christians. Wow, that is zero point zero zero two percent. It's it's basically non-existent. So it's very unreached. Um, so there's really no growing church whatsoever. So they are in need of people to take the gospel to them. So what we did on our short-term mission trip um, was to pray four hours a day for God to break in. And then we would go out and we would do evangelism, um, which basically looked like it does in the States. You just go and you strike up a conversation with somebody. You had to find an English speaker first, which wasn't always easy. Um, but once you found someone who speaks English, uh, you just strike up a conversation, and then you swing it to the spiritual, and you ask them, like, are you religious? Or uh, there's a mosque there. Um, do you go to that? And you just end up talking, and I always try to draw it back to Jesus. Like, who is Jesus to you? Because there's a lot of people who believe in Jesus and there's a lot of similarities between many religions, but Jesus is the deciding factor that separates all those people. Um, so I always draw back to Jesus. And I will say, like, evangelism overseas is a lot easier than here. <laughs> to me, because people want to talk about religion. That's right. And here, it's uncomfortable. That's right. It makes people uncomfortable to talk about religion. Like, truthfully, I'm uncomfortable talking about <laughs> Jesus sometimes to people. It's just awkward. Um, it shouldn't be, but it is. It's something... It's like a stronghold that Satan has in this nation. Right. Amen. And it's not good, but um, we're praying that the Lord will release revival in America too. Amen. Truthfully, like we need it. Um, America will be saved. Like Jesus will have His inheritance in America too, um, which is really exciting because this is where we are right now. And many of you, you're called to be right here and to preach the gospel right. in, in your workplace, at home, in your community, in your school wherever. Um, and you can be a part of the Great Commission by doing that. And you have to know that that's what you're called to. Like, it, God is very sovereign, and He has placed you where you are for a reason. And it's to proclaim the excellencies of Jesus. That's it's right. to tell people who He is so that He can receive worship from them. But we would 
we would go out and we would just um, make friends with people and just drink some tea or coffee with them and just talk about Jesus and it was wonderful um, but it's a very dark place where I was There's, it's dominated by Islam it truly really is um, for the last 700 years it's been dominated by Islam and there are no Christians there to fight spiritually fight the war there because missions is a battle it really is um, the powers of darkness are very real like Satan is way war against the kingdom of God. Amen. Um, and Jesus talks about spiritual violence Amen. in the Bible. He says the kingdom of God it suffers violence, and the violent men take it by force. Like we're at a war right now, and the crazy thing is, we're promised victory Amen. by Jesus. Like We have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. And Jesus will win this war. <laughs> but there's still a battle to be fought. So we have the opportunity to partner with God in fighting this war that we know we've already received victory for. Um, but it's a very dark place. And I think probably 90% of the missions is prayer. And that means that you can do missions here in other countries, like truthfully. Like we have to pray that the Lord, a couple different things. Jesus told us to pray a prayer. He said, pray for the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into Amen. the harvest. Because we need missionaries. That's we right. need laborers into the harvest. That's right. Um, in unreached people groups specifically, um, I know so many friends who are passionate about Jesus and passionate about the gospel, but I, missions has never crossed their mind, mostly because they aren't, have never been exposed to it. And I've never been exposed to it until a few years ago. So we can pray for the Lord to provide people who are willing to go and preach the gospel to these people. And we can also pray that he would open doors in closed countries for the gospel to be able to spread. Because there are places now that it is, it is illegal to be a Christian. Well, in the country I was in, it wasn't illegal to be a Christian, but it was illegal to be a missionary. So we can never talk about why we were actually there. We were just tourists uh, for two months. Oddly enough, but uh, I only I got asked if I was a missionary twice, so it, it, I did a pretty good job of hiding it. But anyway, um, but we can ask the Lord to open doors for the gospel to spread, and we can ask for the Holy Spirit to break in and move on people's hearts. Amen. Because Paul says in First Corinthians, "I planted another water." But God is the one who causes the growth. That's right. Amen. So all we can do is go and give a testimony of who Jesus is and the salvation that comes through calling on his name. And it's the Holy Spirit who is going to break in and bring revival in these countries. Amen. So y'all can do that here just as much as I can. Um, and that is super encouraging because not everybody has the opportunity to go overseas. Thankfully, I'm 24 years old, and I'm like super excited and have the opportunity to go. But um, you can you can partner with me on this. This is a team effort. Like as a, a body of believers, we are all the body of Christ. Amen. And we are a, we are a team. That's like, right. Truthfully, like I'm really excited that y'all want to partner with me on this. And um, I was really excited when Mom told me that y'all y'all were asking about me. And, even when I've been here, like I said, like everybody's come up to me and said, we've heard about you. We've been praying for you. Amen. And I believe it. And I'm asking you, please, as Kason and I go, continue to wage war with us. Like, Amen. Continue to be on our team and pray for us because Amen. Jesus is worthy. Amen. Um, and I just want to encourage you. Like, There's one thing in this life that matters, and it's to have an intimate relationship with God. Amen. Um, Amen. And yet, we want to give that opportunity to other people. But what we don't want to do is be so focused on doing ministry and missions That's right. that we miss out on the intimate relationship That's with right. Jesus that we were meant to have. Amen. The book of Hebrews says that Jesus went to the cross because the joy set before him. Mm-hmm. And that joy that he was looking to is that he would be with you forever. Amen. Um, so I just encourage you, like, the relationship that you personally have with Jesus, it means everything. So, uh, that's kind of all I have. Um, yeah, like, find out how you can be a part of the Great Commission. Find out how God is calling you um, to spread his name 
throughout the entire earth so that he can receive worship from all people. But more than that, he wants your heart. Amen. So just give yourself to him and uh, see what he does. Like, there's no one like our God. There truly isn't. And yeah, we get a lot of great things from him. Like, the gifts are great. Like, the joy and the peace that we find. But the giver is much more than the gifts. So, uh, I love y'all, and I'm so thankful that y'all allowed me to come and share. And please, like, if you want to know more, if you want prayer, if the Lord's doing something in your heart, um, and you want boldness to share the gospel with people in your workplace, wherever you are in life, or if the Lord's calling you to even go overseas or something, even on like a one, one week mission trip, and you'd like prayer, please come down. I'd love to pray with y'all. Because I truly do care about y'all. Amen. We're a team now. Say amen. We're bound. Amen. But yeah, thank y'all so much. Amen.